For limited time, Bob, we slimed the price down of a live coaching game to $22, okay? No promo code needed. Just click the link below. If you've ever wanted to try out league coaching, this is the way to do it. I watch you play a game, and, you know, I help you along the way. It can go a lot of ways, and usually it's a lot of fun. So check the link below to purchase some of that. Alrighty, enjoy the video. Alrighty, welcome back to the jungle. We we'll play Nocturne versus the big man. Who will full clear faster? Who eats more impossible whoppers? I love plant-based protein, and I eat a lot of it. I promise. For the runes here, we have Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand. Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter. You also want to run, run... Christ, want to run that attack speed in the shard as well. And then the scaling HP. In general, for Nocturne, you want to get quite a bit of camps, and the way to do so is by never, ever, ever, ever overcommitting for plays when you don't have the time. But Sawyer, when do I have the time, and when do I not have the time? Well, it depends. In the first two turns here, though, most of our time is going to be spent on clearing these camps. For Nocturne's ability, this passive gets reduced every auto attack, and then you do a spin. That looks very cool. <laughs> And then heals you a little bit as well. You know, it's also AoE, so helps with killing the small parts of the camp. That's where a lot of the sustain from the clear comes. The Q is that trail dealing physical damage, and whoever it hits will be marked. And then that will continue the trail, because you also get movement speed as you're on top of it. As well as bonus AD. And that bonus AD goes up quite a bit. By the time we're like level... Uh, let's see, level... Five, it gives us 40 AD. That's a whole BF sword, Bob. Look at how much a BF sword is. That's that thing for free. Not too bad. The W is a spell shield. Blocking an ability. Helps you avoid a lot of CC, as you do just have to run right into them as Nocturne. And then if you block an ability, you get bonus attack speed. That passive also gives us 30% attack speed. I mean, like the BF sword. How many daggers is that? <laughs> That's like, that's like two recurve bows right there. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's why you go the W level 2. Because it's all about swinging on these camps, as you can see. Just auto-attacking and, you know, you press the Q sometimes. But yeah, that, the clear is pretty basic in that sense. And then the E is this fear. You get a... You channel it, and then once the channel is complete, so long that you stay on top of the target, then the target is feared. You get more movement speed towards the feared targets. And that is that. So... As Nocturne, most of the time you want to land that Q, follow up with the Fear, stay on top of them, and then it's just all smacks from there. May whoever has more attack damage and HP win. Amumu, I saved my smite just for this situation. Yeah, you don't have smite, do ya? Yeah, little loser. E, auto, Q, auto. Bye bye, W. Bye bye. I'm gonna have to, I guess, just die to Hui here. The big man has beat my ass. I'll be honest, I thought I would live, but it really don't matter. We are back to the top side. Lickety split. <laughs> Can't mess with the big man, or we pay the price. Because even if I spell shield that Q, he just has that second one coming up. It's whatever. Both lanes were pushed in. Just die. Back to the top side. A kill for... Well, I guess the Hui gets the kill, so it's not... Doesn't matter. Here's the next step, Bob. We get level 5, and then we do the dragon. Since we got the scuttle crab, we got all the camps we need. Now, Amumu had to invest his time in that. Has to invest his time to do that scuttle. Reset, kill his camps, and then be in position again. I'm going to beat him to that dragon easily. So after you do that first full clear, you get back to these camps. And now these camps are respawned, so they give us more XP. The wolf's level 5. Higher level than me since I died. So it'll be giving me a whole lot more. So if you do a first play like that, you do a gank, you do an attack, or you just die to the enemy jungler, it can all be fine, so long that you've cleared your camps. Just boom, we hit level 5, Amumu shows top, we're going to immediately punish that, taking this dragon. Once you hit level 5, even if I was to do my raptors, krugs, his wolves, and gromp, and the dragon's kind of more worth. The dragon gives you that right amount of XP that you're looking for. Put our ward down and start this bad boy up. Nocturne's pretty good at doing the dragon since you have the sustain from the passive and a lot of AD from the Q. And even though these guys are pushed up, if their sums aren't spent, we are spending our time on this. It's guaranteed! You guys don't have CC! And 
and it's just Q and auto attack. Any day now. Any day now. Enemy balling's gonna back off, and that's fine with me. Once we get level 6, we'll pay him a visit. So we go from level 5 to about 36% to level 6, and now that we spent our time on that, wow, Amumu's still on the map. We can go back to our camps and then farm these. Look, Amumu's got a reset, man, for the most part. And then I can just path right up to these Void Grubs. Schmack, schmack, oh, right, let's check it out, boom. So now we're looking for that level 6, so if I do the dragon and come back to my red side camps, then I can hit level 6 off these. But if I was to do the raptors and krugs, and then do the dragon, I'm pretty sure... One, it would take me longer, two, I'd lose my timing, and then three, I'm not even sure if it would give me level 6. Phew. Aw. Oh, check this out. 97% to level 6. Well, Amumu does that Rift Herald, or the Void Grubs, but that just evens them out. So now that we're level 6, we can skip our camps. We're strong, we can fight, and it's very likely that this guy's camps are up. Let's make this guy pay. How dare you kill me, Huey? Hello. Phew, smite. Amumu, you got a recall. That's part of the game. Victor does have everything, but Huey is very close to his turret. He's waiting for a bigger mistake than this. No action there. So we have to ask, who do we want to gank? Well, it's going to be the Huey or the Ash Senna. This Renekton has Ninja Tabbing. He's pretty tanky. So I'll go ahead and clear my blue side camps. And then probably reset and play for the bot side. Way It's always going to be way easier to gank the bot laners. They'll be lower level than you. They're squishier. There's two of them, so you can get a double kill. And once you get this ulti, right... It's single target, you make it where the enemy can't see anything, and then you fly right to them. So, you get access to these ranged characters that usually think they're safe, so when they're doing stuff like pushing lanes, that's the time to punish them. And that's the whole, the whole shebang with Nocturne, is to punish the enemy when they think that they're hot. In the meanwhile here, we're getting our farm, we're getting strong, Amumu still hasn't recalled, he's, <laughs> he still hasn't recalled! He eats an impossible Whopper a day. Is this good or bad for his health? Well, you know, it's not its not actually a fast food burger. You know, it's a bit different. Impossibly delicious. We got a whole bunch of gold to spend, Bob. Building into Stride Breaker is our first item. Giving Nocturne every stat he wants here. To do. We'll build that Phage, uh, Dagger, two Long Swords, and off we go. Now we just need one camp for level 6, and then we'll go fight. So let's get that red buff, and then onto the map, make some plays happen. Since we uh, farm so much, we're going to have that level up, so we'll have a level advantage. We'll have an item advantage, and we have our ulti up. All the conditions we're looking for to fight. All we have to do after that is get into position. Your own jungle is always going to be harder to ult the enemy. You only have so much range. If you're in the river, the enemy jungle, it's going to be a whole lot more viable. Use our smite here and get a move on. I got places to be. I actually made a reservation here. Sir, this is a Burger King. Yeah, I, I made a reservation to get the Impossible Whopper. Deluxe meal. Alrighty, I'm in the enemy jungle. They already killed the Ash, so what I'm actually going to do is just spot out Mr. Amumu. I can get a flank on the Senna. We don't even have to spend our ulti. If you don't have to spend your ulti, Bob, please don't spend it. It's such a long cooldown. Hi, Senna. Cute. Moving on in. All right, guys, I'm not even tanking. Ulti. Joink. EQ. Auto. Smack. 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 Run! Mumu's gonna have that ulti. I'm just gonna Q away. Oh! Flash away from this. He doesn't have ulti. Nice. Well, that's a bit deep. Run, guys. Okay. E, auto. Run the other way. You're here since when? Q. Oh, man. If I kept running to the left, I think I was out. Just like the first death, like, that play kind of sucked, and it's all fine. <laughs> like, it's so beast. Because we farm our camps, it is all whatever. So now we have the option to path for those Void Grubs or path for the Dragon. I want to keep playing bot side. So by the time I finish my clear again, my ulti will be back up. So we'll clear our camps down towards bot. The dragon gives us better scaling. I have three carries on my lane. So yeah, I'll be playing for that. 
But a Moomoo's farming his camps. What if we just slimed a couple Void Grubs, you know? Who's gonna stop me? We got the Tiamat, that gives me AoE damage. Since we die, we don't get the whole Stride Breaker. So we're still powering up until that first item. Nocturne's so relaxing like this. 11 minutes in and there's just been a whole lot of farming. <laughs> Run. Auto? Smite. Peace. He has Leandri's and uh, a level advantage, so we're just out of there. Trying to slime whatever we could get. We got two Void Grubs. That's okay. That's more damage for my allies to the turrets. All ranged champions, so that can help them get the uh, turret plates in the early game. And then just speed up the process of taking the turrets later. Pathing towards that dragon now. But yeah, since uh, Amumu has his item completed and we don't, we're definitely not fighting there. Maxing the E second, giving us more damage and more fear duration. With every point in the queue, I forgot to mention, more damage, more movement speed, and more bonus AD. My bot lane's resetting, so I can spend a lot more time farming here. Well, actually, let's do this. Let's do Raptors and then reset as well. Because I won't have an ulti after my Krugs, so I might as well complete this Stride Breaker and then be on the map. Stride Breaker, and off we go to the bot side. You want to reset through the base gate like this, so that you have options. Stride Breaker giving us AD, attack speed, HP. All very good stats for Nocturne. All you do is hit them, hit them fast, and then get hit. So it helps us with that. The active now slows and gives us bonus movement speed for the more people we hit. So we want to get an ulti onto Ash or Senna or Huey. Those are the only targets we're using our ulti on. No messing around. No funny business. Control ward right here, ward right there. Help! They're split up right now. They're already done with it. Give it a second, boys. Okay, nice. W, E. Auto, Q, kiting. Give it a second, boys. Ulti. Stride Breaker. Auto, auto. Ulti onto this guy. Get some damage. Nice. Schmack. And clean him up, boys. Clean him up, boys. I thought we were fine. We have a Milio ulti. That just cancels out the Amumu ulti, but... Yeah, me. They did that dragon so fast. That's an L, but it's not the end of the world. Because what we're going to do now is get right back to bot lane and ult them. My bot lane has been winning, so they only have two turret plates left. If we kill bot lane, we take that turret, boom, we got a game, baby. At the end of the day, two Victor basically cleaned up the kills. So that's what it's going to look like. We start the play, we initiate, we die, the carries clean it up. A very one in three, like, not loser, very cool guy, very a provider nocturne, one could say sort of game here. Luckily, we're doing the bruiser build. God. Because that fight, all I did was just stride breaker three people and then use all my AoE damage. I can't really single one out. Rinse and repeat on the jungle path. You know what we're doing. What the f You know, I just feel singled out. You know, I feel targeted. The Ash is dead before I can get there, huh? Now this Rift Herald is totally off the board. I'm not strong enough to fight that top side. And my Victor still hasn't reset. So, since my bot lane takes that turret, we'll just be farming up now. Really trying to power into that level 11. That's when our next spike is. Other than that, it's, it's completely chilling. Nocturne is on rails. To the next station. We go in the exact same direction. Mumu bot side, hot dog to the Rift Herald we go. So if he's bot side, I can try to get this Rift Herald right here, right now. His bot lane won't be there, I'll have numbers advantage, and if I, you know, no one's here. Maybe I'm in luck, baby. Nocturne's pretty fast at doing this, too. Uh, but it's warded. Well, they have the Scuttle Crab. Give me a second. Nice, a Blast Cone. I am a hacker. Into mid lane. Auto Q. Nice dodge. W. Let me get that bonus attack speed. Now this is going to take us a long time, but all of our camps are down. You may be thinking defend top lane. Well, if I defend that, it, I don't really get anything for it. Whereas if I take this, ooh, we can get more. I can push with my Victor, my Lucian. That move is going to be so tanky. Who gave him all those kills, huh? Be honest. 
Alrighty. We slimed away a Rift Herald. Hot dog. Alrighty, we're in position here. Ulti. Oh god, I'm not gonna kill anyone here. Can get pretty good damage off though. That Stride Breaker sets up my Lucian and Victor for damage. Just go ahead and drop the Rift here. I'll take this mid turret. Nice. Ride it on in. Don't mind me, boys. Pop. Nice. Alrighty, that's the play. That's the play. We don't need any more than this. Now stand in front of the ADC just in case. Phew. I mean, I'll ride that bad boy in. I guess I'm who doesn't have smite. Q. Hot dog. Don't hit that Amuma. Hit the turret. I'm pushing with my team. I'm so good. The main deal here, Bob, is I'm not just walking back to camps. I'm hanging out with the boys. They invited me to hang out. What, am I not going to hang out? Now, he's doing a bit much. So just let him do him, you know? Skylar's pretty good at Lucian. Slime little camp. Let's reset. That dragon's coming up. We get the empowered recall from taking the Rift Herald. And now from here, we're going to go Ninja ninja Tabby into the Tunneler. Oh, give me another longsword. Off we go. To the bot side. Now that we're entering the mid game, it's going to be more about blasting off our ultis, not full clearing. So if I do my Gromp Wolves here, I'm not in position bot side to fight the dragon. So we're not doing that. 26 seconds on the ulti. Once we get level 11, it's up sooner as well. And we have our ultimate hunter stacks now. So... Mid game becomes about blasting off these ultis rather than all that farming we did in the early game. We farmed so much in the early game to get to this point. Pink. Nice, level 11. Let's do this. Check it out on the minimap. More range on that bad boy. More range, lower cooldown, more damage. Bigger boobs, better pizza. Papa John's. Start this dragon. Up to the enemy to contest. Don't ult the ash here. Pull them towards the dragon. I dare ya. Now, I want to ult the Ash, and she just gives it to me. Schmack, schmack, schmack. Q is fine, is fine, is fine, I win. Schmack, schmack, schmack. Moving. Don't get Q'd. Q. Oh, close. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. Oh. Mr. President, get down, there's a sniper. Well, we got the dragon. Check. This is like the perfect example of a game. Like, when it doesn't matter to die if you take these steps properly. Like, <laughs> why? Oh, because I got my golden XP and I'm not gambling anything. Skip camps? Gamble. If lose, lose game. Me? Not gambler. I play on the house's money. But you have winning lanes. Damn straight. Sometimes you have winning lanes. I don't know, man. Sometimes you have losing lanes. Blue trinket. Control ward. The Tunneler gives us a little bit more HP. The real shebang is always going to be completing the whole item. So now that my ulti is down, I'll be farming until it's back up. And then when my team is pushed or if the enemy team is mispositioned, then I can punish them with the ulti. We want to use this ulti onto the Ash, onto the Hui. These carry champions I want to be farming. So Raptors are down. Hui was bot lane. No, oh, nice, nice, nice. Ash was mid, so we want to be around there. AKA being bot side, or yeah, bot side. Two for one special right here. They're in front of turrets though, that's a problem. Okay, crazy ulti. It doesn't, you, you don't want to dive for a kill right there, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm just hanging out at this point, we've already skipped our camps. It's a damn shame that the enemy is so pushed in. You guys could be farming this bot wave. We're going to turn this into a 4v5. And I'm keeping an eye on it. Doing some camps in the meantime. I need the enemy to get away from that turret though, which I'm not going to do. If my team just keeps pushing them in. Guys, push bot lane for the love of god. <laughs> Hi, Amumu. Illusion's still pushed, so, so am I. I'm gonna ulti, potentially, but then we have Milio ulti. We still have to commit. 
Since the enemy's not truly engaging, I'm not using my ulti yet. Because I hold it, I still have the threat. Alrighty. Lucian's backing off, so am I. That's how you play it, Bob. Just bolster your allies in the mid game. If they're pushed up and you're farming, it doesn't make sense. Meanwhile, as they're reset, as they're getting on the map, and all of that, I can be farming, and it's all good. As a jungler, you have way more time to play with, and it's fine if you don't farm, because as you go back to the camps, you'll still get catch-up XP. More XP for having not farmed. The enemy could make a mistake here by showing mid. But there's so many of them topside. So my team's gonna push mid, we really don't have to worry about Baron. I'll go ahead and... Milio's gonna ward it. Look for an isolated ulti here. We have been in the jungle for so long. Ulti. Blue trinket. QWE. Try breaker. Oh, smite. Auto, auto, auto. Nice, we killed him. That guy was not very tanky at all. Deal a surprising amount of damage. I can't really help with that Baron, but I really doubt they're on it. Keep pushing. Keep attacking, Bob, you know. Don't walk all the way from here to Baron. Just keep pushing. Schmack, 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 schmack. Run! Shridebreaker. Pew. Poking. Rest in peace. Let's try for one more wave. These guys are fighting topside, so we might have good numbers. Schmack, schmack, W. Schmack, run. Stridebreaker, flash. Q, E, auto. Smite. Noob down. Clean him up. I have to flash because I use my spell shield. I need a spell shield for his stun, but it's so tricky. Experimental Hexplate, two control wards. Experimental Hexplate giving us the same stats as Stridebreaker, AD, uh, attack speed, and HP. But now, it gives us 30 ultimate haste. Remember when I said mid game's all about blasting ultis off? It gives the enemy less time where my ulti isn't up, so they have less wiggle room to play. Very nice. As we ulti, we get bonus attack speed and movement speed as well, helping us stay on top of the target and actually kill them. Good luck, Victor. The Ash doesn't deal that much damage. Nice, oh, Amumu's dead. That's Dragon for us. Now, we're about 23 minutes into the game, so as we finish this dragon, it will be all about the Baron. We're level 13, and we're not getting much stronger than that. So if I can continue to keep those carries down, the Hui, the Ash, they don't have any scaling left on their team. Meanwhile, my carries are strong as hell. I want to keep the plays going here. I'm not going back to my jungle camps, you know me. Yeah, <laughs> mid-game, you know me. When's the last time I hit a camp? Ulti. W, Q, E onto Hui. Close. Smack, 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 stride, smack, smack. Q, 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 Q. Bop, 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 bop. Nice. Well, I suppose I kill the Hui instead of the Ash. We can hit this turret and then go to Baron. Stay doing the play. Don't just walk to Baron here. The same deal as, like, not walking back to the camps. Well, that was weird. I wanted to kill the Ash and then end up killing Hui. We don't really have a wave, so now we should go to the Baron. I can't even help my team with this position, I'll be honest. Even if I'm in front of them, there's nothing here, guys. There's nothing here. We're not getting the turrets. Go to the Baron. Even with experimental hex play, you got away from my ulti. We just wasted Hui's death timer on that. Oh, since we delayed this, now they have time to get here, which is a bummer. So the Baron play is just not as strong. They have a very good team fight. But we're still contesting it, Bob. There's really... You don't want to play, like, too defensive. Let it rip. Okay. Play it slow. Amumu has to do something here. So now we stop hitting it. The Baron D aggros is fine. And they have to deal with their mid-wave, so that's good. What the fuck, guys? Ulti on the Ash. I'm deep, Bob. Just keep hitting. Oh! Suppose I live. That Milia ulti healed me so much. 
still using my ulti on the carry there, and then that initiates the fight for my team because I'm in front. They're hitting me and not my back line. Suppose I survive too. This time, we have a super minion wave coming, and we can take this inhib. So, he's fine. He's okay. Now as a melee champ, don't hit the turret. Okay. Now I can hit the turret. Q away. Nice. Now we back off. Clean. Alrighty. So since we challenge that Baron, that makes the enemy have to do something about it. And then we have a, a better position for a fight because we pulled them towards it. Go for Black Cleaver as our third item. Just more HP, more AD. Gives us some armor pin as well. And then... <laughs> like, we don't even have to stop to farm, I swear. <laughs> like... Oh, yeah, yeah. The Ash is pushing mid. You're joking. Yeah, you better run. My ulti is up. These guys are like... They have to do something. There, there she is. Ulti. There she was. Phew. Well, that's my ulti, guys. Start this Baron up. Man, those are so lame. Whenever you use the ulti and then you just... You lose the vision like the frame of... And since it's a single target ability, you have to be able to see them. Imagine if the ulti was a skill shot like a world of gold. People would be flying across the map. Whoa! My smite was so bad. I mean, you know I wasn't paying attention, but here we are. This guy probably killed me. Shield. Q. Auto. Get this. Outplayed. Who's with me? I can heal off the camps and my ulti's coming up soon, so we don't want to reset. With three of them dead, we still have a good chance to end. Give me this, give me this, and... With the Victor TPing in and with my ulti coming up. Let it rip, baby, let it rip. All we need is one wave to crash. Okay. Go mid, go mid. Ulti. Strike Breaker, W, E, Q, auto, auto, auto. Keep tanking. Alrighty. Send me home, boys. The 2, 6, and 10 Nocturne. Yep. He's the guy. He's a cool guy. Who gets lots of kills. And lots of girls' phones numbers. Let's see. Final damage. None, none of my items show the damage. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You don't have to get fed to, to win the game. You just got carried. Listen, Bob. It's about the steps to take, okay? Final damage deal, 18,000, just as much as a Mumu, okay? And actually, he was pretty fat, so actually... Damage taken, 43,000, way more than a Mumu. He could never, he could never tank like me, the 2, 6, and 10 Nocturne, okay? With Conqueror healing, is 566. So yeah, that's how you take the proper fundamental steps on Nocturne to potentially have... A chance, regardless of all things. All right. <laughs> Alrighty. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, click that join button to support the channel, and get access to videos sooner. I'll see you in the next game. Alrighty, welcome to game two. I'm gonna be playing into Viego. My lanes are pretty hard scaling too, so I'll just be doing the far max path. This will allow me to bolster bot side, but also get involved in any plays if Viego happens to gank. So definitely more reactive than if you John full clear, where we start at the buff and then <laughs> send it on down. I mean, just do the same thing every time. And then if nothing happens, this also lets me get to level 6, potentially a little faster. But just like last game too, this will allow me to play around the dragon. So, although it's a bit different starting the raptor, skipping red, than doing Krug, it's going to end up pretty much the same. As all things Nocturne. Running the exact same runes. And then what I'm mainly thinking that Viego would do is just pass topside and play to attack the Aatrox. Which if he does that, then he's going to have to deal with me taking his red side, doing dragon, and then just generally attacking the mid lane or bot lane. But we have a CC support down there too. That really helps the cause. 
but we don't have to make anything big happen, so that's nice. That's nice, because you never know. You never know what your allies are going to be like or what the enemy's going to be like, I tell you what. I'm going to save putting a point in my Q or E until I finish the wolves here. Although it's faster to clear with two points Q. If you don't have your E and the Viego ganks on that timing, then you showing up barely matters. So, nothing happened, but I'll keep farming. Two points in that Q. Even us more damage, more AD as well. Smite the Grom, since I'm pretty sure Viego's pathing topside. That will get it respawning faster as well as just speeding up my full clear. Luck up there. Vega would have probably had to skip some camps to get a dive off. Alrighty, so there's no play for me on the bot lane since Nautilus is going top. And my raptors are coming up, so I'll just cross through mid here. Putting my first ward in the enemy jungle. It's always going to be the most useful timing to put your ward down. Cassidine, I love you. Q, you took the wrong path, buddy. E, saving our flash for now. Smack, 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 smack. Q, flash, smack. Good luck. Oh, I used his health potion. Smart. Oh, oh I didn't get my W off in time. Q, E, auto. Oh, that's the price I pay for trying to attack that cast and shit. Diego's probably going to get my raptors, but it's still kind of okay. Reset to my Krugs. We'll clean up whatever's left of our camps. Flash auto did not kill him, man. Thorn shield, fleet of footwork. Man. They have so much healing nowadays. Oh, overstayed by Diego. I have items over him, so we want to try to fight here. Put that control ward down. Nice knock up. I wish I had my flash, damn. Q. Now, oh! W. E. Oh my god, that Q missed. You're joking. Auto? Auto. Q. Nice. Punched him in the face with that one. Holy moly. A dagger and a control ward, and once again, right back to the top side. Well, actually, since my raptors are gone, let's just do wolves. Since we've skipped so many camps, I would imagine that Wolves and Gromp will just give me level 5. At the end of the day, it's a 1 for 1 now, so... <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. Vago gets his freebie because I overcommit to cast it, and then he overcommits for the, the Krugs. He doesn't have enough time for those. He could have got my Raptors and got out of there. But, he overdid it. Alrighty. Want to get level 5 here, and it's going to take these two camps, Wolves and Gromp. And then after that, we can play for the Dragon. Nautilus keeps roaming, which is super bad. It doesn't do anything. I've passed bot side, big man. Nice! Viego shows! Alrighty, let's take this dragon. I've lied to me, used ulti. My top lane does have prio, but you guys can stop the Viego and Void Grubs. It's whatever. This dragon is a freebie. Their bot lane had not reset yet, so it's obvious they have to crash that wave and then recall. And until I'm level 6, I'm not doing any cross map maneuvers here. Viego is still topside going to Gromp. Bob, check it out. We can take his red buff. Let's do this. Although this is happening topside, it's my team's play. Think owned. I'm so rich. My allies killed an enemy jungler for me. Red buff's gonna take me a while. We have more. We have enough time though. With Diego dead. Even if he resets here with home guards. Come on, give me level six. Bing. Yeah, not enough. Ally has been slain. At the end of the day, one for two here. I'll try to get a flank on Kasten, but 
Pretty unlikely that we get anything. Cute. Alrighty, let's get out of here. Back to my red side camps. We're staying on the map so that we can guarantee that we get these camps. Even if Diego gets the Void Grubs, he's just evening out on objectives. And since he died and got back on the map and all that, then... I've been spending all that time farming, so we're probably going to get stronger then. Got our ulti. Vladimir's going ham. So I'll move into the river, sure. What is the deal, man? Q, auto, auto, smack, run, auto, run. Vladimir will finish this off. Q. And back to the camps, just like last time. Point. Right. Move normal, man. That ain't my problem, guys. He's a noob, not me. <laughs> Could have ulted, but that's so not worth. We want to use our ulti to punish the lanes, not to get random kills. If you're attacking laners, then you're setting yourself up for success. Classic diamond palms right here. Why did you let him execute? You didn't kill him either, man. Like, <laughs> who cares? Phage, longsword, to the bot side. Oh my god, shut up. With my ulti, I can skip camps right now. I'm down one camp of tempo, so that's kind of a shame. It's a shame that Nihilus permanently resets topside too, but moving into the river, I'm in position for an ulti. The Kastin wants to get crazy. He puts a ward down, but that's not going to help him if he ultis like this. Q, E. Well, there's his flash. And then that puts me on the top side. Let me get these Void Grubs down so this Nautilus goes home and finally lanes bot lane. But that's the attack on the laner. You want to use the ulti to try to get something. In that case, we got Cassidy's Flash. Hook. Damage. Boink. Nice. He has no flash. Can't follow the kill here. Schmack. Nice. Super bad attack by the enemy. The Viego should not be ganking for Kassadin. He should be attacking the Jinx. That is in a 1v3 with Zaryumi and potentially Viego. All right. Nautilus, check it out. We're getting Void Grubs, baby. Heck yeah. He gives us more damage to turrets. Oh, what's that? No one hits turrets on our team. Oh. Well, heck yeah. We still got him. That's pretty good. Diego spent his ulti, too, so that's a lot of downtime that he has. And in that meantime, we want to be, like, hyper farming because all the camps are up one. And then two, like... He doesn't have the potential to do a big play, so if we farm a lot, reset, spend our gold, have ulti, and he has ulti, boom, we're in position to counter. In position to counter, and we'll be strong. 1200 to the stride breaker. Let's do the raptors here. I'm going to skip the Krugs, and then that will allow me to play for bot side more. So even though Viego's ganking that top lane there, we do not care. Dragon coming up. Check. Enemy bot lane pushed up. Check. Alrighty, we got our level up, so let's go ahead and skip our camps here. See if we can't get some raptors before the dragon spawns. We don't have to make a play happen before the dragon either. With Viego topside spinning his ulti, that is that. We can just start this bad boy up. No raptors for me. Shoot. Nice. Isn't it weird that a Vladimir solo killing a Kassadin? He's fine. He's fine. Zeri has her dash even if I was to engage the play here. So one thing I'd be waiting for is for Zeri to use her dash before I would ulti. But since we're on the bot side, we have this opportunity. We already have Stridebreaker in the bank too, so... 
The river could potentially be warded. Let's move into the lane bush here. With Viego bot side, he's on red buff. He does have the option to try to gank bot lane, even without his ulti. Nautilus, big man, we have a dive if you, you know, stay, but do you? This guy does not like killing his laner, but he does like going topside. Stride breaker and to the top side with the big man with the big anchor. I want to play for bot. Nautilus wants to play for top. It's so annoying. Why don't you just kill bot lane without him? And it's pretty hard where Zeri has barrier, heal, exhaust, Yumi, a shield. You know what I'm saying? Well, skip the camps. My ulti is up and this play is happening with or without me. Nautilus ulti. Okay, let's clean it up here. Q. Stride breaker. Ulti. E, W. Auto. 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 Nice. That's what I'm talking about with saving the ulti, man. If we use our ulti early, then we can't follow the flash like that. I'm leaving with this Gronk. Best believe. W, E, Stride Breaker. God, run. Q, Stride Breaker. Help. But I got a Gromp, you know? It's pretty big. So, in the early game, we got two Dragons. We got some Void Grubs. They got none. My carries are pretty strong. The Vladimir is very strong. The Jinx is pretty much even. And now, as we enter the mid game, I just have to ask myself, who is strong on the enemy team? Who do I want to focus? I would say the Aurora and the Viego. It's going to be much easier to kill them. One. Two, the Kassan and Zeri are still scaling. So, whenever the Aurora or Viego try to do offensive plays, if I can be in position to punish them, that's what I want to try to do. Viego trying for the Rift here. He's going to get it, but is he going to get out? He doesn't even try to get it. Stay around this area here for a second. Into his Gromp, boys. Q. Alrighty, back to our camps. Oh. Even though our ulti's down, right? If these plays are happening, it's fine to be near them. Because we can always go back to the camps. But we're not looking to attack ourselves. If Viego's going to farm those camps, that's fine. Because now we can shift to the top side. Viego can't be here. And Aurora probably wants to kick the Aatrox's ass with this item advantage. Aurora, I love you. Ulti! You eat. Stride Breaker. Schmack. Schmack. Dude, I swear the Stride Breaker's not going off lately. But since we got that E, we get that fear no matter what. Let's help Aatrox push and take this turret. We killed the bad guy. Let's see if we can get some more for it. Nice. It would only be Viego up here. The Q gives you more AD as you're hitting the turret too. Right, let's crash the wave. You can use the Stride Breaker for the damage too. Nice. Perfect scenario now. Dragon's coming up. Ulti's coming up. Or the ulti's on cooldown. And all of our camps are up. It is time to full clear towards bot. We spent all that time skipping the camps, doing the play. And now, since the play is successful, it's time to go back and farm. Perfect timing too. Viego just turbo ints it. With the weirdest build I've ever seen. Is he just doing like ultimate bravery with that? Shield bow? The Serrated Dirk in Recurve was doing a lot of damage in the early game. But now it's just turned into like this nothing burg of a build. Are you tank? Are you DPS? Are you confused? Dude, I'll definitely get some anti-heal as well. Actually, I don't know if Aurora heals. Everyone has fleet of footwork, though. Nowadays, like, every champ in the game. Honestly, I'll just skip the camps for now. My ulti's up. These guys are up the map. Jinx is getting there, too, so... I'll start the dragon. Yeah, 
you have to think, where's Viego? Where is the enemy bot lane? I would guess top left. <laughs> yep, I'd be right. So we can't defend top lane, right? So we're going to attack bot lane or mid after this. Rest in peace. You can see this takes a fucking eternity to solo. Any allies around here? But right, let the Aatrox die up there. Don't try to get there from bot side. Instead, attack whatever you can bot side so I can take his camps. I can maybe even dive that turret, for example. Not going to be killing a Cassidan, but... Cause some problems here. Because with defending those turrets, it's also the laner's job, really. Smack. Ulti. EW auto. Noob down. Since Kassin commits in with his ult, he is stuck there. Run! You're so screwed, but here we are. Moving. Q. Let's just get in there. What am I thinking? E. Auto. Schmack. 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 W. Q. Oh, Q. Q. It's whatever. Ninja Tabby. What to build, what to build. Hmm. I want some magic resist, that's for sure. It's so weird. Top lane magic, 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 magic. If there was a magic damage thorn mail right now, we would be in business. Oh, Maul of Mount Mortius, that's so weird. That's so weird. Let's do Black Cleaver. And then we can get a true tank item afterwards. Because if we get a mid-range item, it's just not going to be as good. The carries are going to be strong. Black Cleaver gives me good damage, good tankiness. And then we can get some defensive stats. We truly enter the mid-game. These guys are pretty deep in here, but Jinx has that reset. For once in my life, I'm moving without ulti. Wish me luck. Jinx going to die, but Aatrox is coming, but we don't want Vladimir. Yeah, that play just sucks. <laughs> ADC shouldn't be diving into their base, but whatever. Back to farming. To move towards there, all I do is lose a little bit of farming time, which isn't the end of the world. Schmack. Bend the mid turret a little bit. Level 11, we got more range on that ulti now. That really helps against champions like Zeri. Oh! He said his abilities. Yeah, we don't have to do it all. I don't have to get the anti-heal. I don't have to get the shield break here. All we have to do is team fight. That's what we're looking for. Where can we get a team fight? Around Baron, around Dragon, or in the enemy jungle. So two minutes on that dragon soul for us if we end up getting it. So we don't have to make anything special happen here. Farming my camps and waiting for any opportunity where the enemy would misstep. And then we can initiate a fight with our ulti. And then our ulti would be back up before the dragon spawns too. So. But with no one really laning, Vladimir hanging out. Nothing happened down here. We really don't have an ulti. I need these guys to be all the way up mid lane. I'm not going to ulti in front of that turret. That's for sure. Oh, Q, W, Stride Breaker. He is fine. In position, but like, we'd rather not fight here. We don't have Aatrox. Q, ulti, onto Zeri. E, Stride Breaker, W, onto Diego. Q, careful now. really being careful now, are they? Oh! Nice. Nice. Because I flash away, they chase us in, and that's that. Let's try to get this turret. And that will be our turn. Oh! I need one more camp for uh, the Black Cleaver. Tricky situation with the dragon coming up, eh?
All right, Black Cleaver to the bot side. Black Cleaver gives us that AD, HP, Ability Haste, and Armor Pin, as well as some movement speed too. Movement speed against their team is very good. That Armor Pin, even if they don't build armor, it's still good as you go into the mid game. Once the enemies pass like level 9, <laughs> they have enough armor. Oh! Okay. Nice. Super good start to the fight for us. Get a ward there for Aurora. Focusing the dragon. We're, we are not getting off this dragon since it's soul. Smite. Nice. Uh, Earth soul giving us a bonus shield. 350 HP on everyone is insane. Imagine everyone just got a giant belt. A giant spell right now. Pretty beast. As well as that extra armor and MR passive from the two of them. Just start the Baron up. We got smite. Up to the enemy to stop us. No, what's that? Your ADC random trolled, random died? Suppose you lose everything now. Since we're strong, that's that. Smite. Follow the Jinx basic. Oh, ulti. Cute EW. Auto. Auto. Nice, we got Diego's ulti. No one was following me either, so. They could have random killed me if they wanted to. Now we get magic resist. Always do it like that, Bob. Get your two bruiser items, then build resistances. Even as tempted as I was to get some magic resist early here. Because two HP items, then resistance. Very good. And then I can curve this into a real tank item. Next step here is going to be pushing with my team with Baron, though. Since I don't have ulti. And most of my camps are, like, too much time spent. I'll just be, <laughs> I'll just be laning with the boys here. Frontlining for Jinx is good enough. Getting this wave in is good enough. Jinx is going top. Well, so am I. Would hate for her to be alone. I can't believe she's not getting random owned here. There's no casting in, in these bushes up here. Push, push, push. Yeah, there's the casting in the bush. I know. Don't hit the turret. Just stand here. Menacingly. Is fine. Wait for the next wave. Vladimir's pushing bot. Aatrox and Nautilus hanging out. They can't dive onto the Jinx either if I'm on top of them. At least they're gonna have a harder time. Hold two. Any allies? I don't get it. The Aatrox isn't going in, the Nautilus isn't going in, like. We're getting bot to it regardless if they're fighting, but that was fucking weird by my team. I'm tanking everything and then... Anyways, they're gonna clean them up. Careful. Careful, she's gonna do that Aurora thing. There she goes. E! Okay, rooted. Not unless E would reveal where Aurora is. And Vladimir, everyone! From the bot lane. Look at how much magic damage we took. <clears throat> More magic resist. And that's a job well done, Mr. Nocturne. Stand in front of the ADC. Team does nothing, die, and it's a complete win. Why? Because the enemy commits onto me. I'm the bruiser. They didn't hit the carries. Without my top lane and support even flanking. Let's give everyone blue buff here. And no matter what I do, hitting level 16 is not as important as pushing the pace of the game. So since my Jinx still has the Baron buff, I'm going to group up with her. My ulti is up, and that minion wave mid is there. So let's be there. Well, she lost Baron buff, but she's still pushing. If we can be up the map, it's so much better than being in our jungle. It's not really about our power up anymore, it's about being in position. Ideally initiating a fight with my ulti, but it's going to be so hard to find the enemy. Anywhere pushed up here. Ulti, onto Zeri, Strike Breaker, EWQ. It's just like instantly over. You don't want to take the fight right there, guys. The bot wave was pushing. Now me personally, I know my team sucks, but... 
a bit of a surprise to everyone else. They're fighting without Vladimir. Check. They're not setting up the Jinx. Check. They're not laning. Check. Give me some more magic resist. Is there you dealt 2,400? I well, hope we didn't lose the mid base turret. That's good. Luckily, we have this Elder Dragon coming up. That will give us an opportunity for a team fight. My team's very bad at when, whenever nothing's happening. Because they just, the Nautilus and HR just run into shit on the sidelines. It doesn't make sense. Whenever you do an objective, you pull the enemy towards it. And then the fight's not right here. It's right here. And that's much, way, just impossibly better for everyone. I just keep looking at that Viego build. What is that? Wits in shield bow mortal. What is that? What are those? Edge of night. What is that? 30 seconds through the dragon. So since this mid wave's coming in and Jinx reset, I'll push that mid wave instead of walking all the way to my raptors. Mid wave pushed. Dragon position much better. Oh! W. Q. Drybreaker, E, auto, 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 auto. Nice, noob down. Waiting for my E cooldown, but I can go in with my ulti. Not to the Aurora, I guess. Q, E. Whoa. W. Schmack, schmack, moving schmack, 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 schmack. Q, Q. Noob down. Onto the Jinx. E. It's fine, I got the thing, I got the thing, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, nice. I flashed his ulti and I W'd his fang. Anyways. <laughs> 15 seconds on cast and we'll see what we can do here. At the very least, we're getting an inhib. I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. I can probably end. Vladimir deals a lot of damage to the turrets. And Kasten has to spend abilities on me. W. Nice. Nice, he's just dead. Push, 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 push. Key part right there, man. Just see if you can do it. See if you can take it all the way. Don't play it. Say, I'm going to go back to Dragon. Be a man. Push, push, push. Alrighty, that puts us at Diamond 1, 83 LP. Final damage dealt, 1,600. And damage taken, 40,000. Nocturne gets carried by his team for a game. <laughs> we definitely did some more lifting this game. It was so awkward to play with the Nautilus, I'll be honest. But I stay true to my morals. I ult the carries, I frontline, and I die like a man's supposed to. I go to work, I eat dirt, and I, and I fart, okay? Take notes. Ay, ay, ay. Nocturne's so strange, huh? Sometimes so beast mode, sometimes eh. But so long that it's not, oh, nothing, nothing. I'm too scared. And then we're really talking. Alrighty, Bob. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. See you next time. Peace.